<laughs> no, he just oh. scored. He just kicked me so hard. It was like his whole little, he went like, whoops. He's getting comfortable. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Welcome to an unedited video. <laughs> Guys, <clears throat> Unfiltered. Raw. Raw. What? Oh my goodness. First and foremost, welcome back. To our channel. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We are back with a raw, and unfiltered, unedited video. And this is one that we were hesitant to do because, I, well, at least I was hesitant. I typically don't share stuff that I haven't processed yet. Yeah. And yesterday I had opened up to Tori about some things I've been struggling with. And I think that's kind of the theme of this little quick video of, um, I, you know, I had this on my heart that I feel like sometimes we as believers or people in general, we either like, we're either totally messing up or we're doing everything perfect. And there's lack of the in-between period. And I think with some things that I've been struggling with, I'm in that in-between period and that's okay. And I think that's what I wanted to share with you all today because <clears throat> I, I had some downtime this past weekend and I was able just to kind of unpack a lot of my thoughts. I'm an internal processor where basically I have these that's so raven moments where I'll just be sitting there enjoying my life and then I'll, I'll look off totally and, and, out. and then I realize, oh, that's not healthy. And I'll just share two quick things. Um, <clears throat> one of them I've realized I've had a really unhealthy emotional dependency on my phone. Um, I would just take it everywhere with me, I always have it in my hand and you don't really think that makes a big deal because like, oh, I'm just, I'm at a red light. Let me hop on my phone. Oh, I'm going to the restroom. Let me bring my phone. Oh, I'm going to go do this. Let me bring my phone. But then you realize, wait a second. Like, why am I so attached to this thing? Like, I can't not have it with me. Yeah. And so that was one thing that got me into a deeper conversation with myself. But during the hurricane last week, uh, I did a lot of preparations for our home. And there were a few times Tori said something sweet to me. And I felt myself wanting to cry after she told me those things. Um, and then I shut it off. Like I turned off the valve. It's like you're brushing your teeth, the water's on, you turn off. And I just turned off all my emotions. And I wondered why I did that. Maybe I didn't want her to see me be thankful for her praise and appreciation. I don't, I don't know why. But I started to unpack it a little bit more. And I realized that because of my previous uh, experiences, a people pleaser, always kind of living for other people's acceptance and affirmation. I, when I became a Christian, I way overcorrected this way to where I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna allow other people's feelings about me dictate how I feel about myself, which I think is a, a step in the right direction because we are complete in Christ and Christ alone, but I realized that me shutting off my emotions had made me kind of just numb and just operate kind of like a robot. And that was pretty eye-opening to me. And then I was, we were talking about it and, um, and like even right there, like I'm getting emotional, but then I turn it off and I don't know if that's a healthy thing. And so um, I was talking to Tori about it and she had just listened to this talk. And what was that quote that you used? Yeah, so I was listening to um, some women that I admire. They were having a conversation, and she was talking about how throughout her childhood, some, <clears throat> some people really manipulated and abused like the authority they had in her life. Um, and then she realized that those wounds became walls mm, that's, yeah. later, um, and that she had to really like experience a lot of healing so that she could have healthy um, mentorship where there's correction involved and there's, um, yeah, some, anyways, but the, the quote that you're talking about yeah. is like, we have to make sure that our wounds don't become walls. Yeah, and I'm realizing now that mine definitely did. And like, I thought it was something that was protecting me and then protecting others because of my previous experience with, you know, like, my unhealthy relationship with people and how I would just depend on people to feel okay. Mm -hmm. But now fast forwarding to where I'm married about to welcome a baby in the next five weeks, 
I I want to feel again. I don't want to just operate on autopilot. And I don't know if any of you all have been hurt where you let that hurt jade you or change you for the worse. And um, there there is healing. And so, but the part where I mentioned at the beginning where whether you're here or here, I think it's okay to, as a believer, like take a step forward in the right direction and unpack things and then take another step forward with some accountability of friends and take another step forward with with some like deep discipline of like, okay, I'm not gonna allow myself to just shut off my emotions. I'm gonna allow myself to feel. And, you know, you take steps forward and it takes time, but yeah. it's like that quote, like it's okay to not be okay, yeah. but we're not glorifying not being okay. We're just saying, hey, it's okay. Yeah. And so I think that's really what I wanted to share is when I had some time to decompress a little bit, yeah. um, I was able to pinpoint why I've been feeling the way I've been feeling yeah. and yeah. And I just think it's really cool how God like prepares your heart. Like as he was sharing, I was having a hard time not getting super emotional. I just wanted to listen. I didn't really want to speak at all. Um, But like knowing this baby's coming in a couple weeks, like the fact that the Lord's like doing this in his heart so that he can actually feel and experience the fullness of what it's going to be like when baby boy's here got me so emotional. Um, Because I do think that it's really it's really easy to be like, well, this is how it was when I was a kid. And like, now I'm learning that things are going to be really different for our kid. And just, there's a lot, there's a lot there. And can I say something real quick? Yeah. That, that I forgot to even mention that. And I'm not throwing shade at my dad at all. My, my dad's dad died whenever he was eight and, and his dad was a very tough guy. And, um, so my dad wasn't fathered correctly but I realized that because I I never got that verbal like affirmation affirmation, that at first it hurt but then I just made it unimportant to me to where it didn't matter at all to me or at least I I thought it didn't um like words of affirmation is a love language and all that stuff and so that was one of those things that I realized that it's just like okay well if I'm not going to get this then it's unimportant to me But then I realized that it being unimportant to me for so many years now has really caused me to not be able to emotionally connect as well. And so that was, but again, it's not, I'm not blaming my dad. I'm just saying that we, we all have baggage based off of messy relationships. Um, I kind of want to just pick up real quickly before we close out because we're going to try to keep this a quicker video for you guys, partially because it's going to go live in like an hour. <laughs> um, but that whole idea of it being okay to not be okay and how the Lord meets you there and how it really is a process. Like, I'm not going to lie, even going through this pregnancy, I y'all have been with us through the whole journey of trying to get pregnant and praying over this baby. And I always, always just thought like, no matter the pain, no matter the uncomfort, no matter what I go through pregnant, like I'm never going to complain. I'm going to like, everything's going to be beautiful. Right. And (laughs) it's, it's been a lot harder than I thought. And I really struggled with like the emotion side of it because I didn't want to even share in the beginning, really, like, if I was in pain, if I was uncomfortable, if I didn't feel good, like, all of those things, I almost, like, felt guilty for not feeling good, or for not, like, being so filled with joy and thankfulness as I'm, like, throwing up, or my back is killing me, or whatever symptom I might be experiencing, I do feel like I had one of the pregnancies where, um, any symptom you can get I kind of did get um but I really struggled with like even expressing kind of like what I'm going through with Chad because I felt like it made me feel ungrateful for the pregnancy and that was not the case at all I just I'm like learning wow like my capacity is a lot smaller than it used to be and I hit walls a lot faster and I get cramps if I'm standing up too long and I have to sit down again and like there's little things that I'm like man I feel because I'm that personality type that's like I want to accomplish things and I want to get things done and I'm performance driven and so it's really kind of um, 
played a little bit into like my identity and like the performer side of me of like mm -hmm. oh I want to perform this pregnancy well yeah. like I want to I want to make it you know this or whatever and the Lord's just like <clears throat> I just need you to meet me here um I saw this quote the other day and it said something about never um never mistake your strength for the Holy Spirit's work in mm. you and it really got to me because I think that sometimes I forget that like the only strength that I have is through the Lord and through the Holy yeah. Spirit. And as I take advances and as we have these like revelations, that's the Holy Spirit working inside of us. That's <clears throat> not like our own understanding yeah. and our own logic. And it's the Holy Spirit sanctifying us and bringing us into the Lord's presence every day. And so I just want to tell you guys, like, it's okay to not be okay, and it's okay to not put it on, and it's okay to just be honest with the Lord and yeah. have Him meet <clears throat> you there and get people around you to hold you accountable and have these conversations with that are going to lift you up and speak truth into your life. And so, anyways, that's what we've been processing behind the scenes. Yeah, well. yeah. <clears throat> just a lot of emotions. A lot of emotions, especially on this side of the table. <laughs> Mine has been the opposite where I've just like walled myself off yeah. because if I don't get, if I don't get too high, then I won't get too low. And I don't, I don't know if I want to live like that. Yeah. I think that's it. I think that's all you guys. <laughs> so it, I, I, I mean, not to put a positive spin or a silver lining, we just, we want you to know that, you know, every, we know if we're going through stuff, other people are going through stuff. Um, and so, you know, taking time to acknowledge like, hey, I'm allowed to be not okay right now. I don't need to perform happiness. I don't need to post things on social media that put me in the best light. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't need to pretend. I don't need to lie to myself about how I'm doing. But then I also can do small little steps yeah. to get better and better each day. Yeah. Um, then, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a really healthy way to go about it because... People are messy. Relationships are messy. Yeah. Stuff happens. You know, there's stuff that yeah. we can't control that happens. And yeah. so... Um, and we're constantly fighting a spiritual <clears throat> battle too. Yes. Like there's so much going on that's like in the unseen. And if y'all want to hear more about that, we're actually going through an entire devotional series on that on our podcast. And so <clears throat> um, we'll link that below if y'all want to follow along and do that with us because it's been really eye-opening and encouraging. And so... yeah. Love you guys. I think that's it. We love you guys. Do, 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 do.